One of my YouTube viewers recently asked if it was possible to use the FFT function on an oscilloscope to measure the total harmonic distortion on a signal. And of course this is possible, so in today's video we're going to take a look at that. So let's start off with the definition here. The, the total harmonic distortion, or the fundamental total harmonic distortion, is defined as the total of the RMS voltages of all the harmonics divided by the RMS voltage of the fundamental itself. Now, of course, there's going to be some math involved when we're computing the THD from the FFT result, but we're going to use some shortcuts to help us out with that. The equation you typically see for computing total harmonic distortion is this. Now what's going on in the top here is adding up the total RMS voltage of all the harmonics. When you add RMS voltages, uh, the process is to square each voltage, add them all up, then take the square root of the sum. So that's what's going on here. So V2, V3, V4 represent the second, third, and fourth, etc. harmonics. And then we're squaring each of those terms, taking the square root, and then dividing by the RMS voltage of the fundamental. The FFT is going to show us the frequency domain content of the signal, both of the fundamental as well as all of the harmonic content. Now we can make measurements of absolute magnitude of each of these components, but more importantly, we could make relative measurements. When we talk about relative amplitudes, we're going to use a term called dBc, or decibels with respect to a carrier, or in our case it's really going to be dB with respect to the fundamental. Uh, this is graphically illustrated here. So let's say we look at the amplitude of our fundamental signal as here. And if we measure how far down, how many dB down the, the harmonic is, that becomes the dBc value for that harmonic. And by using the dBc values for each of the harmonics, this will give us a little bit of a shortcut in the math for computing the THD. If we take a closer look at the uh, THD equation, again we've got our uh, sum, RMS sum of our harmonic uh, RMS voltages divided by the RMS voltage of the fundamental. That could be expanded out to be the square root of the entire quantity of the second harmonic with respect to the fundamental, the third harmonic with respect to the fundamental. So you could do this all individually, V squared over V squared. Now let's also take a look at the dBc value. The dBc value, again, it's a, uh, a logarithm of the power ratio. So dBc is 10 times the log of some power, okay, divided by the power of the carrier, or in our case, the fundamental. If we take a look at that piece of it, uh, you know, it's a ratio of two powers. Uh, the power in this case is V squared over R, okay, whatever that voltage, uh, you know, RMS voltage is, squared divided by the load impedance. That applies in both cases. Now in both cases, the load impedance is the same, so that cancels out. So that rate power ratio is equal to the ratio of the squared voltages. Well, that's exactly what we have here. So if all we could do is take these dBc values, okay, and knowing that um, the dBc values, we can easily compute this power ratio. That power ratio is equal to these ratios. So we just need to compute that value and then sum them up and then take the square root. So we, we do that by taking 10 raised to the dBc value divided by 10. We do that for each of the dBc values that we have. We sum all of those up, take the square root of the sum, and then multiply by 100%. It's as simple as that. Now, of course, this computation you need a scientific calculator to do, but most people have that on their phones these days. So let's go take a look at it. So here's our test subject today. This is the auto leveling circuit that appeared in uh, video 157 and 162 that uh, takes an audio input uh, that can vary over a very wide amplitude range and knocks it down to a more manageable uh, you know, co kind of a constant output. This, I put this together to go on the output of a radio scanner to avoid uh, large variations in received signal strength. But uh, I also made some comments in that video that uh, while this works really well for audio, like for a scanner, it wouldn't work really well for high fidelity, uh, like music or television, because it does add some distortion. So now we can actually go measure that. So this is our DUT. I'm going to be uh, inputting a 1 kilohertz signal from a signal generator that's got very low harmonic distortion, about 0.03%. And that's at 1 volt peak to peak. Our output is going to be at about 50 millivolts peak to peak, at the, obviously the same frequency, but it's going to have some distortion on it, and that's what we're going to go measure. Okay, so here's the output of our circuit. 
we zoom in on this, we can see that the signal isn't really a perfect sine wave. It's got a kind of a fatter lobe up here than it does down there, so we know it has some distortion in it. And we can actually see that in the FFT result. Okay, we can actually see here's our fundamental component here. We've got a second harmonic component that's right there, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. So we know uh, we've got some harmonic distortion to go measure. Uh, now, just as a refresher, um, if you want to learn more about the FFT and using the FFT on a scoop, you might want to check out my video number 65. And also, uh, if you want to learn more about the use of dB and dBc and all these other dB terms, check out video number 136. Uh, both of these videos, as well as the video for this circuit, will be linked uh, down below along with uh, today's notes. So we'll simply use some cursors to measure uh, these dBc values. So if I position uh, cursor A uh, right on top of the fundamental, uh, right here, and it looks like I've got B already sitting on top of the uh, second harmonic. Let's kind of reposition that back on the second harmonic here again. And uh, we can see that's about 19.7 dB down. So we can record that value of uh, the dBc value of minus 19.7. And if we keep working our way down through here, uh, we go to the third harmonic and take a look at that one. And that one is about 35 point, oh, minus 35.5 or so. Call it minus 35.5 dB down. And let's move over to the uh, fourth harmonic. This fourth harmonic is way down here. He's a uh, he's about minus 49.8. Let's call that minus 49.8. Now he's so much further down. He's you know close to 30 dB down from the uh, the second harmonic. So it really isn't going to contribute much to THD. Once you get uh, components that are are more than 30 dB down, they're really going to kind of be in the noise. Okay, so let's take a look at the math here. Uh, we've got uh, minus 19.7 dBc. We take uh, 10 raised to that dBc value divided by 10, and we get 10.715, 10 to the minus 3. Compute the other ones here as well. Take the sum of those results, and we have 11.0073 times 10 to the minus 3. Take the square root of that, and we have 0 0.1049. Multiply it by 100%, and we get a THD value of 10.49. So let's go validate that. Of course, now one way to validate that is to use the power application I've got on my scope here, which will compute the total harmonic distortion uh, with respect to fundamental. And we can see I'm getting about 10.5, and I measured 10.49, so that's uh, pretty darn close. And one last measure of validation is to use my uh, Keithley 2015 uh, THD multimeter, and that's also reporting 10.4, you know, in some digits here, so 10.45 or so. So these all match uh, to within about a tenth of a percent or so. So we'd say that the uh, FFT uh, measurement on the oscilloscope gives us a pretty good result as long as you set it up carefully. The one point that I'll make when using the oscilloscope here is to recognize that the scope is, most of them will use a, uh, an 8-bit uh, analog digital converter. And that's really going to limit the dynamic range of what you can measure. So if we're trying to measure something that's got a fair amount of distortion, like, uh, like this audio device that I have here, where we're looking at about 10% THD, we can get some pretty good results. But if you're looking to try to characterize uh, the THD of something that is well under 1% or 0.1%, you know, you're likely not going to have enough resolution in the scope to give you uh, repeatable and acceptable results. Because what you're likely will be measuring is the THD of the scope itself and not of uh, your circuit. Uh, so if you need to measure THD of very low levels like that, then you're better off with something like a THD multimeter or a more precision analyzer that's designed specifically for measuring THD. Well, I hope you found today's short video interesting and useful and you now know how to use the oscilloscope's FFT function to make some relative dBc measurements on a signal and then be able to compute the total harmonic distortion from those measurements. Uh, as always, uh, the links to the videos that I've mentioned uh, during today's video will be linked down below, as well as a link to a PDF copy of my notes. If you like what you've seen, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. 
And if you are a subscriber, be sure to click on the little bell that's down in the lower corner here so you can get an email notification each time I post a new video. Uh, thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.